If you're out here trying to DIY your SEO, but you're just like, Mariah, I have no idea where to put this SEO keyword on my website on this page. If that's what you're thinking, then you have made it to the right video, my friend. That's exactly what we're diving into. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I'm Mariah from MariahMagazine.com. And on this channel, I help simplify things like SEO, websites, tech, and I dive into tools and recommendations to help you grow your online business in a way that works for you. So what we're about to dive into in today's video is one of those highly requested topics from my clients, from my students, from my subscribers here on YouTube. Everybody's wondering, okay, Mariah, I have my SEO keyword. I've chosen it. Where do I actually put it on the page in order to optimize my page for that keyword? It's a very good question. Okay, so that's what I'm about to do. We're gonna hop into a screen share. That's what I'm going to show you. Just a heads up though, in this video, I'm not diving into keyword strategy. I'm not diving into keyword research. This video is going to be perfect for you if you already have your chosen keyword, okay? So let's get into it. Okay, so the example that I'm going to walk through in this tutorial is my DIY SEO course sales page, okay? So when a lot of people think about optimizing a page for SEO, they think about optimizing a blog post. And a blog post is definitely a type of page, but if you're DIYing your SEO, remember that you can optimize other pages on your website, like sales pages, landing pages, freebie pages, services pages, product pages, all of that type of stuff, okay? So optimizing a page for a specific keyword, like the overall process is pretty similar, regardless of the type of page. I do have a video already on my channel if you want to see how to optimize a specific product page, if you wanna see how to optimize like an e-commerce collection page. And I also already have a video about optimizing a blog post, okay? So you have those three options. I will put the links to all of those videos in this video description box below. Below, but optimizing this specific page, although I'm doing like a landing sales page, you can go through the same process, like I said, on your about page, on your homepage, services pages, other pages that you have on your website, okay? So before we get into actually optimizing the page, we have to be clear on the target keyword for this page, because if we don't have that, then it's kind of like, what are we actually optimizing this page for? So the target keyword for this page is going to be DIY SEO course. So if you're taking a look at this, you can probably already see two different places that your target keyword should be. I'm going to go over all of them, okay? So the very first place that we want your target keyword is in the H1 heading on the page, okay? So just best practice for H1 headings, there should only be one H1 heading per page, no more, no less. And the reason is, is because these Google bots go through and they look for that H1 heading to be able to understand like, what is the rest of this page about? The H1 heading is kind of like the chapter of a book. The chapter doesn't have numerous titles. It only has one title for the chapter, okay? So if you don't have any H1 heading on the page, Page, Google might be a little confused, like, what is this page about? What is the topic of this page? And if you have too many H1 headings, the Google bots might be like, okay, we have too much information going on. I'm not even sure like what the main topic of this page is, therefore causing confusion. So one H1 heading per page, no more, no less. And if you can, try to have that H1 heading be the very first heading on the page. So this is my H1 heading on the page. The question that I get a lot is like, well, that doesn't really look like an H1 heading because usually the H1 headings are like the biggest font size on the page. So at first visual glance, you might see that this is the H1 heading, but it's not because with the H1 heading, it's about the H1 tag around the text. It's not about visually how that H1 heading looks. So because I'm using Elementor with WordPress, I was able to change how this one visually looked so that I can still put my target keyword in there without completely screwing up my website design because I don't think that we have to choose design over SEO optimization. I think that there is a way to marry both of them, okay? So the very first place that we need our target keyword is in the 
H1 heading on the page. The next place to put your target keyword to optimize the page is in the URL permalink. So you'll see I have DIY SEO course. Remember to separate words with dashes, not underscores, and we're definitely not having a URL that looks like this because Google actually looks for the dashes to be able to see where the spaces are to figure out what the words are, okay? So remember that. Now, obviously, if you're optimizing your homepage or your about page or your contact page, you're probably not going to put your target keyword in that URL, but for other pages, it's usually best practice here. So then that's the second one. The third one, if we scroll down, is try to get the target keyword within the first 100 to 200 words on the page, okay? So if you can, that would be ideal. So somewhere in here or somewhere in here, if I can repeat the keyword again. But keep in mind, sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes it's a little redundant. So although we have some best practices, allow yourself to kind of intuitively follow your gut on this one, okay, because the other thing that we have to keep in mind is that it's not just about getting users onto the page. The page content also has to make sense in order to drive conversions, regardless of what the page is. So if putting your target keyword again right here, like I said, would be a little redundant, then you can just naturally use it throughout the page, which is another one. So the first one that we have is the inside the H1 heading. The second one is in the URL. The third one is try to get it within the first 100 words on the page if possible. And number four is going to be naturally throughout the content itself. So in just regular paragraph text, you'll see that throughout this page content, I'm using DIY SEO course numerous times. But since this page is long, I can get away with using it quite a few times without it being too much, okay? So how many times you naturally use it throughout the content itself is going to be completely dependent on how long that page content is. This is a sales page, there's a lot of content. I can very easily naturally use it throughout the content without sounding like a spammy robot, okay? So that one's another one that you kind of have to be a little bit more intuitive about, but just ask yourself, if I'm reading this, does it make sense to the user or does it sound like DIY SEO course? DIY SEO course for solopreneurs, you're gonna love this DIY SEO course for solopreneurs and the DIY SEO course is so great. Like that don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? So follow your gut on that one. Like I said, it's totally going to be dependent on how long your content is. I know that some people are going to ask, Mariah, can you just tell me how many times to use it on this page? And if you need a number, I would say ballpark, use it once every 100 words, okay? But I did want to bring this up here. So if two, if you're using the keyword too few times, then Google might not understand what the page is about. But if you use it too many times, then Google might see it as an attempt to manipulate search rankings. Okay, so you might think that there's a just right thing. There really isn't. We kind of got to play it by ear. We just, we want to use it enough to give the Googlebots context clues. We don't want to use it too much to where Google's like, okay, you're kind of annoying about it, okay? So naturally throughout the page content is number four. I'm interrupting this video really quick because I created something super awesome and I wanna share it with you. So if you need help planning out your SEO keywords for your blog posts, for your product pages, for your homepage, for any page on your website, then definitely check out my SEO keyword planner. It's a five page editable workbook created in Google Sheets that will help you brainstorm, organize data and strategize your keywords accordingly. I include tips, best practices, and examples to help you get started. Click the link in the video description below to check it out. And then number five is going to be inside H2 and H3 heading. So this is an H2 or an H3 heading. So you can see DIY SEO course used there. And then if we keep scrolling down, let's see. We have DIY SEO course in another H2 or H3 heading, but notice that it's not in every single one. So it's in that one. 
but notice that it's not in every single heading. That's another thing. It's like we want to use the target keyword within a couple H2 or H3 headings, but how many is going to be dependent on your content and how long your content is. And then place number six to put your target SEO keyword is going to be inside an image alt text of an image on the page. So if you don't have any images on the page, well, you don't really have this place, okay? But if you do have images on the page, then try to see if you can naturally get the target SEO keyword inside of an image alt text. So an example would be this one right here. I think the image alt text is like mobile version of DIY SEO course by Mariah Magazine. Okay, so that image alt text is very clear and very honest about what this image is of, but I was also very intentional by getting to weave my target keyword in there, okay? So we have to keep in mind that like what the image alt text is for, it's for screen readers for the visually impaired. If they can't visually see the images, the screen readers will go through and will read the image alt text. So the image alt text cannot be a place where we're dumping keywords. Words. Like the image alt text should not be DIY SEO course, comma, DIY SEO course for solopreneurs, comma, DIY SEO course for online business owners. Like that is not a correct image alt text. An image alt text would be mobile version of DIY SEO course by Mariah Magazine. Like that is exactly what that image is of. But like I said, you're also being intentional about infusing your target keyword into the image alt text. Okay, so that is place number six. And then really quick, I did want to add that how you add an image alt text to your image is going to be completely dependent on which platform your website is on. So if you have questions about that, you should be able to go to Google and be like Squarespace, add image alt text. You should be able to see another tutorial pop up or some directions from that platform's support documents or something like that. And then the last two places to put your target keyword is actually going to be on the back end of the website here. And this is going to, like I said, look different depending on what platform your website is on. So my website is on WordPress and I'm using the Yoast SEO plugin. But regardless of kind of what yours looks like, where that target keyword needs to be is the same for all website platforms, okay? So place number seven is the SEO title and place number eight is the SEO meta description, okay? So your target keyword should be in both of these if possible. If you can get your target keyword at the front of them, kind of like this, that's usually best case scenario. But like I said, we also have to keep in mind that we have to keep the, the user at the forefront. Like if it doesn't make sense to have the target keyword in the beginning, then don't stress out about it. Just see if you can fit it within the SEO title and within the meta description. If you want to learn how to craft successful SEO titles and meta descriptions, I do have an ebook that dives into crafting successful SEO titles and meta descriptions. So I'm going to leave the link to that below in the video description and you can use the code SEOLOVE10 for $10 off. And then to quickly wrap all of this stuff up, I went through the eight places to put your target keyword in order to SEO optimize the actual page. But then we also have to consider like the website structure and interlinking. After you've opted Optimize a page or a post, then make sure that you are linking to the specific page on other pages of your website. So we don't have to overthink this. This is my homepage for my site. You can see DIY SEO. That's literally the link right to the page right away, right in my main navigation menu. Okay, so we don't have to overthink this. Having it in your main navigation menu or your footer navigation menu, that might make sense. Or if you have, like if you're talking about a services page or something like that, maybe you have something like this where you're outlining your services on your homepage, then add a link, add a button that links over to this page. Because the Google bots basically go through and they crawl each page and they follow the links. And so when you are interlinking this page that you just SEO optimized from other pages on the website, you're kind of giving the Googlebots clues that like, yes, this is an important page. This is a priority page. Okay, so I just wanted to mention that too. But 
Overall, the reason for optimizing a page for a target keyword is basically to give these Google bots context clues about what this page is about so that it can put you in Google's index correctly. Okay. So if we don't use the keyword enough times, like I said before, Google might be confused. I don't know what the main idea of this page is. I don't know. So that's why we have to use it in the right places enough time so that it makes sense without it being too much. Okay. So so there's kind of a middle ground that we have to play with. But the last thing, I know I keep saying this, but the last thing that I wanted to say is that you, if you are using WordPress and you are using Yoast, they will have a focus keyword spot right here. Even if you're using another plugin, a lot of them have this. But a lot of people think that like when you put the keyword in here, that like Google sees that and now it knows the target keyword of your page. That's not true. Google does not see what you put into this focus keyword key phrase spot. The reason why this is a thing is so that this tool, Yoast, can run this SEO analysis. Okay, so I just wanted to add in that little tidbit there. But overall, I hope that you found this video helpful. So that's it for today's video. If you guys found this video helpful, give me a really quick thumbs up. Truly, the thumbs up does go a long way and letting the YouTube algorithm know that my video was helpful and therefore being able to push it out to new people that also might find it helpful. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, turn on bell notifications, and I will see you in the next video.